What's up, everybody? Today I'm bringing you my full thoughts having finished the story for Jedi Survivor. Definitely going to be throwing a big spoiler warning on this video if you haven't finished the game and you care about spoilers, and I hope you come back when you finish and let me know your experience down in the comments below then. For those of you who don't care and those of you who have finished, let's dive in. So I'm going to lead off with the bugs. This is something I've seen a lot of people complaining about online, mostly PC players, but to be fair, there's some Xbox and PlayStation users as well. For context, I played Survivor on my PS5 and had little to no performance issues, not to mention the game looked amazing. I did freeze out once on launch day, but after that, it was smooth sailing for me. So the moral of the story is don't pay thousands of dollars for a console that won't run a game that a $500 console will. All jokes aside, let me know if you had any issues down in the comments below because I am very curious if I just got lucky or if it was just a select group of people that had issues. Moving on from there into the main section of today's video, let's talk about this story. This game followed up a story that I would deem about a 7.5 out of 10 in Fallen Order and crushed it out of the park, landing about a 9 out of 10 from me. Jedi Survivor truly stepped up in terms of storytelling. It made Cal more relatable as a character and gave him a prominent personality, as well as tying into multiple canon concepts like the path in Kenobi and Saw Gerrera's guerrilla fighters once again. We see the return of two main characters thought to be dead in the Ninth Sister and Master Eno Cordova. Both, however, fail to survive the game as Cal strikes the Ninth Sister down on Coruscant in the opening mission and Bode takes out Eno Cordova on Jetta as he betrays the crew. This game was filled with heart-wrenching moments as not only does Eno Cordova have his life taken on Jetta, but so does Seer. In an epic fight with Lord Vader, Seer thinks she's best of the Dark Lord of the Sith but quickly finds out he landed a devastating blow on her. This section was actually really cool. Seer is super badass and I loved playing as her, especially during the Vader fights. But to be fair, I would have loved playing as anybody during those fights because Vader really is the cool part, but Seer does some awesome stuff before that that really makes up for her. There's an epic moment where Seer thinks she's won before she does it again and dies obviously, where she drops a burning bookshelf on Vader and he easily rises from it. But enough obsessing over Vader, even though it was the coolest part of the game, and my jaw dropped to the floor when I saw him walk into the incorrect hideout on Jetta, but okay, okay, I'm done, I promise, we're gonna move on. The first time we go back to Jetta, Marin is reintroduced into the picture, and she is more powerful than ever. She's been exploring the galaxy, even going back to Dathomir where her powers were increased immensely. Now there is something weird here, so I'm not sure how many of you read the book Jedi Battle Scars that was supposed to bridge the two games, but in there, Marin's in an overly intimate relationship with a female stormtrooper, and then in Survivor, she and Cal are making out every other cutscene after they reunite. I came to a point where I disregarded the events of the book. I will never be reading that something from Sam Meggs ever again, as it's clear she's more concerned about what she wants to do instead of what's good for the story. Jedi Battle Scars gets a 3 out of 10 for me and really messed with my head for a bit while I was playing Jedi Survivor. Then there's Grease. We find him on Kobo when the Mantis is in need of repairs as he's opened up a saloon and is trying to settle down but can't resist the offer to come back once Cal arrives. He joins the crew who's just Cal, BD, and Boat at that point to go to Jedi to get Seer's help. Grease is pretty great in this one with multiple emotional scenes between him and Cal as well as a couple that made me cry laughing. Overall, I'm really satisfied with his presence in the game. Now let's talk about the villains. At first, it seems that Dagon will be the big bad of the game and the final fight will be against him, but that doesn't turn out to be the case. You actually defeat him in the lab above Kovo about three quarters of the way through the game, give or take a little bit of time. I don't know. I didn't remember the specific time I beat him. Whatever. It's towards the end. This fight was really trippy though. He caused you to force hallucinate and the fight went upside down and it was really cool and really innovative too. I've never seen anything like it in Star Wars. Once you're removed from that fight though, you find out that Bode is actually the villain. He was a Jedi during the Clone Wars, one the Council sent on intelligence missions, and he used those skills to survive, eventually becoming a dog for ISB Commander Denvik and infiltrating not only Cal's crew, but seemingly Saw's guerrilla fighters too. And does that ring a bell? Because it should. It ties directly to Ander because of the ISB operation in Season 1. Then there was a lightsaber in the leaked Ander Season 2 trailer I saw that I can't show here because I'll get caught by the mouse, so will Cal appear in Ander Season 2 with Saw? Maybe. We'll see. I sure hope so because Cameron is a great actor, he's one of my favorite live action jokers, and he's great and shameless so they need to use him in live action. I still don't know how I feel about Bo's betrayal though. Like it was a good twist for the story, but it still felt off to me, 
personally. It's going to be cool to see Kalen Kata, Ode's daughter, probably being sort of master and apprentice in the third game, but we don't even know if she's force sensitive when I think about it. And if they go that route, it probably means more Kalen Kata instead of Kalen Marin. Marin was so much fun to team up with throughout the gameplay, and I want more of that in game three, much more than I want Kalen Kata gameplay, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. At the end of the day, I really enjoyed this game, and I'm heavily anticipating the sequel and what I'm assuming will be the final entry into the story of Cal Kestis, at least as far as the games are concerned. But as always, I want to know how you guys are feeling about the game. Did you have tons of bugs? Did you like it more or less than Fallen Order? And I suppose with that, most importantly, did you like it at all? Go ahead and let me know all about that down in the comments below and subscribe for tons of nerdy content, and make sure you have a great day.